Hey there, in this video we're going to be covering a p-hat clip. Um, so as of writing this, this is November 2021, so it's been about eight months since this glitch was first discovered. Um, back when it was originally discovered, uh, everyone thought that it was essentially a random clip that is uh, that there's, there's no logic behind how it works. And for a while people would just... YOLO it essentially, they'll just uh, go f have no consistent setup to it and just keep on going at it until it they eventually clip through. So a lot of PBs ended up being luck based and if you got lucky on the p-hat you get to continue the run. This is about 45 minutes into the speed run, about halfway in. So it's a really unfortunate thing to um, have to do in the speed run. However, where we are now, we actually have far more consistent methods and setups to be able to do the p-hat clip nearly completely consistently. Greater than 80% consistency, um, um, at least I find personally. But yeah, let's um, go through a demonstration of it all in one go just to give an outline of what we are doing here. So this is done immediately after we get the bow in uh, the swamp and after you've done any of the kinstone manipulations you would like to do. So let's go straight into this. Cool. So let's jump back to... Uh, I've got a recording of this. Uh, let's jump back to... Yeah, so here's where we do the save and quit in the swamp and we are essentially breaking this down into um, two or th three segments. There's going to be the p-hat manipulation where we want to get the p-hat into the right spot so that we can bring it up to the main platform. Then the second part is the sucking it up so it gets up onto the main platform without killing it. And then the third part is going to be actually like putting it into the spot so that we can clip and doing the clip. And then I guess there will be movement to get to the dungeon afterwards but that's all very easy stuff so let's go through this um full um in one go without um stopping at any point so at this after doing the save and reset we mash through the title screen to make rng consistent now this here is known as a vlax setup and is incredibly easy um so it's the most recommended one to use so we do a set of precise movements there to get the p hat into the perfect spot here we're going to pause buffer as we pull the p-hat up and kill this rope so it's not in the way. We're going to get the gust jar and the shield out. We're going to pull the gust, uh, the p-hat out of the wall. And then we're going to start moving it over to the left hand side of this area. Now when we get it over to this bridge area we're going to push it directly into this corner. And then we're going to do two hits on it up with the shield. And then we're going to equip the sword and boots and we're going to boot dash through the p-hat. And then we're going to follow this route over here, going around to the right and dashing down to this spot here. And then screen transition down out of bounds. We're now out of bounds in the wind ruins. We're dashing to the right here. Um, do two screen transitions, pause buffer and go up and we go into the... Um, into the next dungeon fortress of winds so that is everything we're going to cover in this video it's going to be in depth and cover every single step in um, maximum detail so we know exactly the most consistent way of being able to go through all of this stuff right so first part is going to be um the uh, vlax manipulation to get the p hat into the right spot so let's go through this so after you've done your kinstone manipulations, however you want to do those, um, you are going to do another save and reset here in Swamp. And then you're going to mash through the title screen and you should get positioned roughly here. Now Link's position here is going to depend on which, um, on exactly the vertical height in the um, on the bridge that you entered the swamp originally. Um, way back before you did the bow. The very first time you entered the swamp, you entered um, from Western Woods at some vertical height. This is going to impact how your setup works. So you want to make sure that you always go from the same spot 
Um, so make sure that you enter the swamp at always the same spot. Me personally, I always come at the very lowest spot um, possible. This also factors into doing the kinstone manip manipulations. Um, your your starting position also factors into that. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to walk to the left and then we're going to roll down into the swamp water. When we hit the swamp water, we we hold left during this. So we um, walk to the left, we roll down, and then we're holding left um, during that roll. And then as soon as we hit the swamp water, we start charging a boot dash. And then as we start doing the boot dash, we're going to hold down to um, zoom past the edge of this corner. So we hold on. To, we hold down with the boot dash until we're roughly like in this area here but we we you just do it until link is going to be able to get around this corner here um when we dash towards corners we like to hit like kind of hit the corner so that link kind of like slides around it but not not too high so that link's going to bonk on the corner but like just clipping the corner of it so that link gets slightly pushed around it now there's going to be a rope here that's going to be moving up. This is ideal. If the rope is moving in any other direction then the RNG is incorrect and you did some incorrect timing and how you did it. So if this rope is not moving um, upwards like this uh, then you've got bad um, RNG and you should just reset and try it again. So we're going to stop the boot dash in front of this vine and just hold up to get onto the vine. Now this will be different to if everyone and everyone's practiced uh, the quad kinstone manip. You may be used to having some muscle memory here where you do a roll up into the vine. Um, with this we're not rolling up into the vine, we're just walking up into it. Now we walk to the top of the bridge, uh, um, to the top of this um, the, uh, the vine here. Um, and we're holding up left out of this vine and so the link starts walking up uh, diagonally up in this direction. Now uh, we're gonna wait until link is roughly touching this right edge of this wooden area here. When he, link touched the right edge of this wooden area we're going to tap the boots we're going to hold that we're not actually going to like tap the boots like for like a, a one frame kind of deal we're going to hold it until we get one puff of boot uh, and puff of dust out of these boots and that's going to roll rng uh, enough times here um, for the manipulation to work so after that we we're holding up left this entire time so just did one boot tap there and then when Link roughly gets to this spot here, before, kind of just before Link touches this wall here, um, when he's just on the top edge of this grass, kind of like in line with L Link centrally aligned with this block here, uh, we're going to start charging a full boot dash here. So we just hold the boots down. And we're not holding any direction buttons here. We're just doing a neutral dash. Um, if you hold any other direction whilst you're doing a boot dash here, um, Link does really jittery movement that is slow and um, yeah, Link gets slowed down uh, as you're doing a boot dash here if you're doing some other kind of um, direction here. So we're just doing a neutral dash here, just holding B. And we go all the way up to this sp spot here and we're going to dash up till we hit this first patch of grass and we're going to stop our roll and we're going to roll to the right. Um, in fact we're going to do two rolls, that's the, that's what we do here. When we hit this grass we do two immediate rolls to the right here. Um, I like to, during these two rolls here, to pause to equip the gust jar like so because the p-hat is going to immediately be in roughly this area here. So during those two rolls we want to have the gust jar so that we can, as soon as the second roll ends, we can start using the gust jar to pull the p-hat. If you're not fast enough here, the p-hat will wander away into a different location and um, make it slower to be able to get the p-hat. Because if he wanders up to the top of the area, it will be like you have to wait for it to like... It, sometimes if it, it, it hangs around up up here, um, you can't gust jar it here because you can only aim the gust jar directly up or directly to the right. You won't be able to hit it if grab the PI if it's up there. So you kind of want it to be in this area here. 
um, so that you can start gas jarring up. But yes, essentially that all of that is what the um, the Vlax um, manipulation is to get this P hat to be in this spot here. Let's go through that again at full speed just so that we are completely clear with this. So we mash through the title screen. We roll down, dash to the left, walk up the vine, diagonal, tap the boots, do a boot dash up here, up to the first bit of grass, two rolls to the right, and we got the P-hat into the right spot. That's what we want to see um, when we uh, do this thing to get the P-hat into the good spot there. If you've uh, practiced the, um, learnt most of the other kinstone manipulations, this one is very easy. It's harder than the double kinstone manipulations, but it's not too much harder. It's certainly far easier than the quad kinstone manipulations. So if you're happy with doing quad, you, this will be a walk in the park for you. Right, so now we are dealing with getting this P-hat up onto the platform. Now, this is all going to be a lot of practice and building, um, like, like with the um, the manipulation for learning the um, luring the p-hat into the right spots uh, where it's building up the muscle memory so that you can uh, do it every time um, with this um, pulling the p-hat up to the spot here um, it's very dangerous and this is what um, once you've practiced all of the parts of the of this whole trick together I'm finding now that this is the most inconsistent part of it because it's such precise timing of pulling this p-hat up into the spot. If you use the gust jar for too long, the p-hat gets um, attached onto the gust jar and when the p-hat gets attached onto the gust jar, is that's trick dead. Um, the p-hat's going to die as soon as you release the gust jar. There's no way of letting go of the gust jar um, that doesn't kill the p-hat instantly which is super unfortunate. So you do have to time to release the gust jar before the p-hat attaches onto the gust jar, but also you can't release the gust jar too early with the p-hat hovering in the spot here, because if you release the gust jar, the p-hat gets released out of the, the suction and immediately falls into the swamp water and also dies. So it's a very small window of opportunity where either side of it, the p-hat will die that you need to hit to get the p-hat into a spot that it doesn't die. So what do we do here? So we start pulling the p-hat up, and then the moment that we see the p-hats, like the p-hat is shaking here, like let's go back to here, like the p-hat is shaking as it's hovering over the swamp water. As soon as we see it kind of like start, like it's a, it's, it's a mix of both, um, like visually spotting the p-hat but also just an in, in, intu intuition over like um you're, you're anticipating how long it takes for the p-hat to like do, um, do its shake to then start being yanked towards the the gust jar but yeah as soon as like here it's just at the point where it's going to start moving over towards us so what we're going to do is we're going to do pause buffers we're holding b this whole time and we're just mashing um start to um be able to slow down the p hat as it flies towards us in real time so that we can see um we have enough time to see it move into the right spot right so here with the p hat moved away from the swamp water and over towards this cliff this is now in a safe spot that we can release the gust jar and it won't kill this p hat the p hat's just going to get stuck in this wall here and then we can uh, try and use the gust jar again to pull it um, completely through but the aim of what we're doing here is we want to pull the p hat past this wall into this upper section here so that we can start um, doing other things to, um, to to we can continue the rest of the of the trick now what's really important is that uh, this rope uh, just absolutely sucks and will come and bully you and get in the way of whatever you're doing so this is why we only equipped the gust jar when we were towards the end of the previous setup we want to keep the sword here so that we can kill this rope so that we can 
you we can deal with the p-hat unimpeded with the rope getting in the way otherwise the more optimal menu would be equipping the gust jar and the shield because we want to use the, a combination of the shield and the gust jar to move the the p-hat around right so um what we're going to do here is we're gonna we pulled the gust uh, the p-hat up into the into the cliff and we're leaving him in there because he's nice and safe just stuck in the the the, the cliff like so i'm gonna come over here kill this rope uh got a really weird um shell drop it's all rng at this point we've uh, kind of the moment that we start using the gust jar for a per per long period of time rng starts going nuts and um nothing's going to be consistent from this point on other than like if it, anything's rng based it's going to be inconsistent so all of the drops from anything and the directions that everything moves is all going to be completely random from this point right so now now that the rope's dealt with and the p-hat is inside this wall we're going to use the gust jar again and again we're going to stand as far away from the uh, the p-hat as possible with the gust jar so that the very edge of this cone of um suction from the gust jar is just brushing the edge of this p hat so the p hat is getting affected by the gust jar but we've got the maximum amount of time that the p hat can fly towards us that we can release the gust jar before the p hat latches onto the gust jar uh, if we had if we were super close to the p hat the instant that the p hat starts moving uh, towards link it would just get instantly s s attached onto the gust jar and then the p hat would be dead which is what we don't want. So we're maximizing this distance here. Now, so um, what we did there, uh, like as soon as the p-hat moves, we're trying to react and do a pause. Um, if you're feeling more confident with this, um, I certainly am not, but you can opt to um, just not do pause buffers and instead release the gust jar. Um, the only issue with that is if we go back to um, previously here if we are charging the gust jar up here as the this p hat is over the swamp water if we're not if we're too early with our release of the gust jar it's going to drop the p hat into the swamp water but if we pause too early it's fine uh, we can just do a couple more pause buffers so that the p-hat starts moving over towards the cliff so um yeah so the safety the safe thing to do here is just to do multiple pause buffers to get the p-hat to be roughly in front of the cliff but the more confident you get the less pause buffers you'll have to do so that you can get the p-hat safely over to the cliff or in fact you can pull the p you can manage to walk backwards and pull the p-hat completely past the cliff and um past this wall here and up onto this grassy area here it's certainly um much trickier and requiring more practice so yeah once the p hat is inside this wall we're gonna just um do another uh, do it again here where we're going to um th this pause buffer here is unnecessary but uh yeah release the gust jar and the p hat is now up into this upper section here Right, so here is where I would like to take over from the, the, the... I've just got a recording going here that is just um, showing off um, all of the movement and stuff here. But now I'm going to take control and show how we can move this p-hat around. So now, this p-hat, I'm going to push it over into this wall first. Very often, the p-hat will... When you're sucking the p-hat up, you'll get a gust jar... Um, blast that will knock the p-hat instantly back against this wall here and it's going to be somewhere in this spot here now what we want to try and do is we can kind of roll behind the p-hat and then shield bonk it and that will hopefully um, knock the p-hat out of that spot um, there so that it's um, it's not against this wall and the the whole aim of what we in, are going to initially do here is going to be knocking the p-hat away from this uh, wall here so that it's somewhere in the uh, the middle here sometimes it can come up here um sometimes like what happened to me is it got stuck down in this corner here but ideally what we're trying to do is we're going to get the p-hat away from any kind of wall here so that it's just sat stationary stationary in the middle here 
Oh boy, my webcam. And right there, that's fixed. Okay, right, so now that we got the p hat, um, I'll, I'll go for a couple more instances of how the p hat can get itself stuck in a wall. But like the whole aim of what we're trying to do is going to get the p hat somewhere into the middle of this area. Um, So yeah, sometimes the p hats um, against a wall like this. If we we go to the like, do what I did there. You want to roll if the p hats against this wall. You want to roll either above or below it, and just use the gas jar down against it to knock it again, um, knock it out of um, from against the wall. Now it may not always be able to go. The p hat may not always come out like this. Like so, here is gonna get stuck in the wall. What would um, what what I demonstrated there was that um, with the when you, when we come up right against this wall here, and we use the gust yard down against the p hat to try and knock it out of um, being inside of this wall. Um, the game's really weird with walls, and that walls don't have like one solid edge to them. Um, or they do, but when you walk against that wall, um, you have a chance of sometimes, depending on subpixels, ending up one pixel further into the wall than r just straight up against the wall. Um, so what is effectively happening is that we're walking up against the wall and then trying to gust jar down to hit the p-hat, but we're perfectly in line with the wall and the p-hat so that when we gust jar it, we're only pushing it directly down. Um, and then the next time I try this, because it's not going through, I do another roll here and we're actually ending up one pixel further into the wall than we were the previous time so that when we use the gust jar we're not in line with the p hat anymore we're one pixel to the right and that's enough to give uh, like the gust jar to apply not just a direct downwards force but there's a little bit of a sideways component to this as well which is just enough to force the p hat out from the wall here so that's effect that's the the method of how we try and get this p hat out from um this um wall here. If it's in the middle here um, of this grass patch in the middle section of the wall, we're going to go either above or below it and then try and gust jar it um, to the other side. If it doesn't work, we just repeat the process, process of rolling against the side wall and then gust jarring it down uh, to until it, it gets dislodged. Yeah, just do another roll like that and then, and then it's dislodged. And what I showed um, earlier, which I'll just repeat here explicitly so it's perfectly clear. This is if the, um, the p-hat is located in the middle um, of these um, three tiles here. Um, what do we do if the p-hat is instead up in the corner here? And I showed this earlier, but we're going to roll into the corner here and then use the shield. And that knocks him out of there quite nicely. Right, so that should deal with how to get the p-hat out of any of these three spots here. And that is the most common spot that the p-hat's going to try and get stuck um, in, is um, in these three spots here. So we're going to use those strategies to f f uh, fling the p-hat out, out of there. Now, um, the next most common is that the p-hat's going to be somewhere on this, um, the top of um, this area here. Um, if it's in the corner, we're going to do it in exactly the same strategy as we did with the shield there. We're going to like roll directly into the corner and then use the shield and it ideally knocks the p-hat out of being in the corner. No matter which corner the p-hat's in, you can always do that strat of rolling into the corner and then using the shield to knock it out. Um, and again, um, this p-hat is, um, is against a wall like it was in the middle here. So we're going to do exactly the same strategy as we did there. We're going to roll against the wall and then use the gust jar to try and knock it out from being against the wall. Like so, like that. And that ideally is going to deal with all of the ways that the p-hat can get itself stuck. 
Uh, I'm going to go put it into some really bad spots, which ideally you should never see, but it's good to know in advance how to deal with these if these ever happen in a run. So maybe do it for yourself, push it into one of these bad spots and just like get it out again, just so that you know that you've done it once before and if anything ma majorly wrong happens in a run, you you'll be able to get the P-hat out um, again. So we're going to knock this P hat over to like here it can be a right bully and just like get stuck in this um, against this bridge like this um, here you just roll through the P hat against out of where the bridge is and then just uh, knock it out um, I do have to note here that if with the P hat inside the like the corner here and link up here um, using the gust jar shouldn't affect the P hat at all Or it's it's more inconsistent to use the gust jar. Uh, some sometimes the gust jar doesn't work. Sometimes it does. But um, the best option when it's stuck against the bridge is just use the shield to knock it out. Um, and another spot that it can get stuck in is against this vine, and this one really does suck. Um, you can try and use the shield to knock it out like so. Uh, but it's very likely going to wake up again before it, um, before you get a chance to um, to get it out of the corner. Yikes, dude. Okay. Um, yeah, it's it's very likely going to wake up again if like it's stuck in this corner like so. Uh, I really don't recommend trying to use the gust jar to pull it out like that. Um, that I got rather lucky there. Um, when you use the gust jar from above, it's deceptive how uh, this angle works, and it's far easier to get the the, the P-Hat stuck into the Gust Jar. The, the P-Hat doesn't need to get anywhere near as close to Link um, to just latch onto the Gust Jar. So I really do recommend against the ever using the Gust Jar vertically like, like this. Um, in the other orientation, when you're sucking um, the P-Hat from above downwards, it's fine, and it's more similar to the horizontal ones, but it's just when Link's above, trying to suck the pee out like this that's very very risky it may not look it but it, it, it is far riskier um right so one of the other things that i'm kind of doing here with this pee hat is that i'm trying to prevent it from getting up like that i'm trying to keep it in its stun state as much as possible by constantly using the gust jar on it um, so the p the timer the, uh, the p hat when it gets stunned it has a little timer inside of it which just counts um, down and then when the timer reaches zero the p hat will wake up and that timer is consistent it's not random at all so you get a real um, you get some real intuition over how long the p hat is going to stay down you you'll get um, just this um, timing. Um, feeling that every, as you practice this trick more and more you'll just get a real feeling for how long the p-hat decides to stay down though I'll try and put it into some like um, context for some concrete timing here um, when you've gust um, also another thing is that every, even when the p-hat's stunned when you use another gust blast the p-hat um, stun timer will get reset again so, um, yeah, it doesn't matter what state the P-Hat is in, every time you use a Gust Blast like that, it will reset the timer on the P-Hat. Um, right, so, uh, yeah, rough timings on this, it's, you can roughly walk towards the P-Hat and shield bash it five times as a maximum before it will get up again. So you can do five and then do another Gust Blast, and, I, and that Gust Blast should hit it right before it will wake up again. So, one, two, three, four, five. And then I was a little bit slow there on trying to use my gust jar again. So that's kind of the optimal movement to moving this P-Hat along, is um, to use one gust blast to knock it, uh, to, to set its stun timer. And then we're going to go and hit it a bunch of times with the shield to push it along. Um, now, Link walk sh walks sl slightly slower with the shield than not um, not having the shield out. So we're trying to minimize that movement that Link's walking with the shield by only just tapping the shield when we actually walk up 
against the p-hat. Um, and yeah, p um, using the gust jar to push the p-hat is the... Um, it's not exactly slow, um, it's only slightly slower than the shield, but it's really hard to directly control exactly where the p-hat um, is going to go with the gust jar. Like here I'm um, quite lucky there that I was pushing the p-hat exactly to the side, but very often the p-hat will get pushed um, off to one side. You never, you have to be literally perfect, pixel perfectly aligned vertically when you're using the gust jar sideways so that the p-hat will be pushed directly in that direction, not get pushed slightly further up or to the sides. Whereas if you're using the shield, uh, it's, you get far um, more precise control over how you can move this p-hat around using the, the shield. So it's just far more convenient to use the shield to um, push this p-hat around. Now the complete aim of what we're aiming to do here is we want to push this p-hat into this corner down here, this bottom left corner. Now um, I will go over um, how, where the p-hat positions itself here. Um, I'll go over this a bit after doing the actual clip. Um, and get, getting to the dungeon. I'll come back to this, but um, because it's rather hard to see what's going on here and it's not too essential if you go with this method that I'm going to demonstrate here. Um, let's just go back to where the p-hat wasn't. Um, I'm just going backwards here in this recording until the p-hat is uh, right it should be about here. yeah okay this will be good right so we're gonna push this p-hat over actually no sorry I want to go further back here I want to go back to where I pulled the p-hat up to the wall Yeah, here. So the p-hat's in the wall here, and we've used the gust jar here to suck the p-hat out of the wall. Uh, and we did our pause buffer just for safety there, and the p-hat is here. So this is a nice spot for the p-hat. We're going to use the gust jar here to make it keep it stunned, and then we're going to use the shield to push it over here. And we're going to use the gust jar again. Okay, so what we're aiming to do here is we're going to push the p-hat until it's in this corner here and it can't move um, any other direction. Well, you okay, so what I was, I was hitting there, I was hitting it into that corner a lot of times. That's rather detrimental. You don't want to hit it super many times. You just want to, like, as soon as it gets into this corner like so, that's good enough. Right, so then what are we going to do from this point on here? So, once you're happy with where you've knocked the p-hat into the corner, let me just check what my, um... No, I don't like that. I'm gonna just use another gust jar on this guy. Um... Do move. Okay, I didn't like that. Let me just go back to this spot here. Um... And I'll go over exactly how you can tell with this um, p hat in an, um, a little bit later. But okay, anyway, if um, once you're happy with moving the p hat somewhere into the corner like this, um, we'll go over the the exact setup um, later. But here, um, now we're going to do the p hat clip setup. Now, what we're going to do is once we've um, used the gust jar to, we, we use the, the gust jar uh, to set the stun timer on the p-hat um, so that we do all of these movements very quickly f immediately after we've used the gust jar for the last time on the p-hat so that we've got enough time on the p-hat timer so that we can do all of our setup to do the clip without the p-hat getting up and um, um, moving out of the way so what we what do we do here um when we put the gust jar away we're going to roll down past the p hat 
onto the bridge here. When we get onto the bridge, let me just roll a little bit earlier here. When we get onto the bridge, we're going to walk directly to the right so that we end up directly under this p-hat like so. Um, now, it, I, I'm i pretty sure that no matter where you stand here, it doesn't um, it, it doesn't matter like where your roll ends up on this bridge as long as you hold directly to the right You're always going to get positioned underneath this p hat in the same spot But you, there's just this nice little corner here that you and or like um, yeah It's a, like an upright corner like that that you, you hold right and you kind of get um, wedged in this spot like so when you're here you can then change direction to up and Link won't move at all. If you press up and you kind of like slide around the PH, you didn't move far enough to the right. But yeah, you, you walk to the right until you're in this spot here and then walk up like so. When we're walking, we faced up like so. We kind of just want to hold up this whole time. We're now going to use the shield and um, we're going to do two hits with the shield on the P-hat. We're just going to hold up and shield this entire time like so. And then the P-hat with by just holding up and shield hitting it twice it gets put roughly into the spot here and this is pretty much perfect for um the p hat clip that we are going to want to do now in the past we didn't know that um the best way of moving the p um to, to be able to do the p hat clip and we thought that a roll was required then you needed to roll to land in the right spot so that the p hat would push you out of bounds um, but what is actually um, uh, what is actually really great about this is that we can um, we can clip out not with a roll that can be inconsistent because you need to roll on the exact right timing, but um, you can just walk through the pee hand; it will clip you out. Or you can use the boots to dash, which is also incredibly easy to set up. Um, is we the same every single time? So yeah, as soon as we've knocked the, um, the p hat up um, twice like so, we're going to use the uh, we're going to um, press start and we're going to equip the sword and the boots. Now, what do we do now that the p hat is into position and we've got the sword and the boots? What we're going to do is we're going to walk up against the p hat like so, and we're going to move um, to the left. Oh well, um, you kind of like don't want to. Not necessarily go upright like so, but you can just hold up like like this. And what we're aiming to do is we're getting on the left-hand side of this p-hat, and we're going to just get into this spot here, and we're holding up. And as we're holding up, we're going to do we're going to tap left here. So we're holding up this entire time. And we're throwing in some left taps along with it. So we're just so it's what we're effectively doing is we're alternating directly up, diagonal up directly up diagonal up but yeah it's just uh, you, you just tap like so now um, depending on where the p hat lands exactly sometimes this will immediately clip you through and you're good now if you do this a couple of times like so like here you just do a couple of um, let me do this in full speed like here you do a couple of left taps it's not going to work like as, as soon as you do a couple of left taps there and you determined okay the walking strategy isn't going to work um you then um we're going to do the second strategy which is going to be doing the boot dash so from this position here we're actually in a pretty good um 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 after doing the trying to do the walk strategy you, it doesn't work uh, we're immediately in a per perfect spot to attempt to do the boot strategy. So what the boot strategy is, you just hold the boots and you hold um, left. Like so. And that worked at that time. Uh, basically, if you don't get the walk strat, you will get the boot strat. But if you didn't try the walk strat, um, and you don't, the boot strat may not work, it was because you should have done the walk strat. They're mutually exclusive. One works. Uh, or the other one works, but they kind of don't work at the same time. So you want to try both to maximize your your chances of getting one of them to work. Um, but yeah, so th this is effectively it. All we're doing there is we're just holding uh, left and boots at, um, from that spot. And um, we have clipped 
past the P hat and we can now walk out of bounds over the top of everything here. Now, what what is going on here? Let's actually kind of like break this down and figure out like, why is this a thing? What is the game doing here? Now, um, what I want you to do is look over on the left hand, top left hand side of the video. We got um, some data values up here. We've got, what I want you to look at is the layer value. We are on layer two when we're on this bridge here. Now, what happens, what, uh, let's go uh, back to before the bridge. Let's go to here. So when Link is standing on pretty much anywhere in this area that isn't a bridge, Link's on layer one. Uh, just a quick explanation of um, what the layer is. The, um, the game tree um, gives every area two layers. Um, so there's normally just layer one, which is the lower layer, and layer two, which is the upper layer. And um, if Link's on layer one, they won't ever just randomly go onto layer two. Um, they need to transition at specific locations. And what are these? These are layer three. And in this area, they are here. These wooden um, things, the, all of the wooden floor tiles here that are on the edge of these bridges are layer three. So there's a big two by two set of tiles here that are layer three. And again, over here, that is going to be all layer three as well. And it's not just on these spots here, but throughout the rest of this area here in the swamp, all of these are going to be layer three. And they act as a transition that allows Link to transition from layer one. They, the, you, Link goes from layer one to layer three onto it, and then from layer three can go onto layer two. But Link can never go directly from layer one to layer two. They has to have that intermediate step of being a layer three in, in between. Um... The opposite isn't necessarily true because you can jump from a ledge on layer two, which will jump you directly onto layer one, and you don't need to go down um, um, through the transition tiles to layer one. Um, in other layer, in in other areas, um, these layer three transition tiles can be staircases, um, and as we go later on in the speed run, we have to deal with the ocarina glitch and. This concept we will apply to that as well, where we're um, basically preventing Link from touching these transition tiles to stop Link from going from layer 2 to layer 1, and we'll just remain on layer 2 throughout the rest of the area. So, um, what are we doing? Um, so, uh, what is going on here? Um, when we push the P-Hat up into the spot here, Um, Link is on layer 2 on this bridge here, and I want to show you a, a visualization of what's going on here. Yes, okay, so this is lay what uh, layer 1 looks like. To layer, um, to everything on uh, layer 1, there, like, there's no bridge here, but um, let's actually go to the other, a, a different visualization here. Uh, this is swapping everything instead to be only seeing things that are on layer two. Um, so, um, what is on layer two? Effectively, only bridges. Bridges are the only thing here in the in the swamp that are on layer two on the upper elevation. Um, the game needs to have these distinct layers, layer one and layer two for these areas like so here. When Link's standing on these coordinates here, we need the layer to distinguish whether or not Link's on the grass on the on the underside of this or on the on the bridge. So that's where the, the whole like layer thing is being used by the game to distinguish like w what part, what section is um, Link actually on. But yeah, we're going to uh, abuse the fact that um, there is a second layer here that we can get up onto and remain on to bypass the rest of the area um, here in the swamp. Um, so yeah, the P-hat is here and using collision from the P-hat we're going to push um, Link. Um, Link's going to walk here, he's on layer 2 at the moment and just before he gets a chance to touch any of these transition tiles 
Um, we are getting um, the P hat to push us to the left here. Um, so that Link never touches these transition tiles and manages to get past a little bit of collision here. Now, um, you may think, okay, that's great. Um, Link kind of like clipped through here on this bridge. Um, why do we have to do it here? Is this the only spot that we can do it? Are there other other? There's other corners of uh, like bridges. Can we not do it at another spot? There's a spot further down with another P hat. Can we do it there? No, we're actually exploiting and uh, just a oversight by the developers. For some reason, the developers just forgot to put a collision on this peg here. And that's why this works. It's literally the developers forgot to put collision box on this peg. All of the other bridges in this area have collision on these pegs on layer two. But for some reason, this peg only has layer one collision, but on when you go up to layer two, it's just like a freestanding tile. There's no collision box on it. There's no, it doesn't act as a wall. So we can just walk, walk through it. And that's it. That's completely the reason why this works. Um, if that if there was collision on that box, this wouldn't work, and we weren't wouldn't be able to do p hat clip. So it's just down to a developer oversight, which is great. Um, and if you look at layer two, this whole time link just remains on remains on layer two this whole time as we um, clip up to this spot here. Now. Um, how do you know if the p hat clipped work? Because sometimes the p hat may be in a, a, um, a bad spot here, and when you try and dash through, the p hat didn't push you, and you link did touch layer three, transition down to layer one, and when you dash up like so, he'll probably bonk on these thorns here. Uh, but um, one of the things that is let you lets you know that link is on layer two right now is. Watch Link as he walks over the grass. The, the Link is just walking normally. Like, there's no additional stuff going on with his animation. Now, let's touch this wooden um, peg here, and uh, the, the wooden floor tiles there, and you may have noticed if you were watching the layer tile, transition from layer two to layer three, and then we walk up here. We're now on layer one, so we got lowered down because we touched these um, wooden tiles. So, it's very important that if you, if you, Suspect that you have uh, clipped through and um, are um, on layer two at all. Even if you haven't actually hit layer two, and um, you, you're not sure yet, but if you if you if you've gone for the p hat clip at all, do not touch these wooden tiles ever again. Otherwise, they will lower your transit, lower your layer. And you'll have to redo the, the, the trick again. You'll have to get, put the p-hat into the spot and try and uh, do the walk or boot trick to, to get through. But another way of knowing if the um, the trick didn't work is after you've gone through the p-hat. If you notice Link's animation here, he sprites. He's got this um, grass effect on him as uh, like he walks around here. But like as he stands in this grass, there's a... There's, there's an effect here which lets you know links on layer one um, and the clip didn't work. Also, if you try and walk over this, um, these rocks here, it won't um, won't let Link walk through. And if Link tries to walk up here against these thorns, he'll take damage instead of walking over the top of them. Now, let's go back to before we lowered our layer. And we can go over... Um, I'm going to jump about a here and uh, jump about a bit here but I'm going to finish off the movement here that we're going to do to get to um, the next dungeon and we're just going to finish off this movement and then come back to just refine this p hat a bit and give a bit more um, insight into what's exactly going on to make it more consistent. But yeah we clip through like so and what movement we're going to um, do here is we're going to roll to the right and we're going to roll down. Uh, when we do a roll right and roll down from after clipping through the p-hat with a successful clip, um, we are perfectly avoiding these wooden um, um, tiles here to avoid lowering our layer. 
and um, we're ending up in this um, spot here. Now, uh, it would be really obvious if we were still on layer one and the clip didn't work because we would um, be hitting this peg here. We would see the animation of Link um, having grass effect as he goes through this grass and we maybe even climb down this vine, but all of that would tell you Okay, the trick didn't work. Link's not just like walking over the top of everything here. But uh, when we get to this spot here, we're going to be holding down right and we're going to walk till Link is roughly like on these bits of grass here. And then we're going to ch start charging a boot uh, boot dash here and, and continue to hold uh, diagonal down right with the boots as we um, dash over to here. You can either use diagonal down right with the boots or just hold hard right with the boots like so. Uh, it doesn't matter, like diagonal right, hard right, it Link's going to move the same way with the boots. What we're aiming to do here with this dash is we want to just um, clip the edge of this um, these thorns here. Actually, you know what, let's, let's just show you what the collision looks like on layer 2 alone. Like I'll bring back that old view again here. Um, yeah, here. So this is just showing things that are on layer 2 or um object sprites so for example the the p hat's not on layer two that rock there on the bottom of the screen isn't layer two and stuff like the ui is not layer two it's just ui um but it, we we re remove layer one so we're we're only seeing things that are actually on layer two right now so we had to come over here as you can see here there are these thorns that are uh, on layer one because we we walk into them and take damage um, but there's an extra component to them which is on layer two and they just act as like a solid wall there's not it's not um, it's not something that we, we can take damage off but they're just like kind of like solid collision that we need to avoid but yeah there's this all of these things that are acting as walls that we can't get past here so we want to just avoid these by um, getting around the corner of that um, as as tightly as possible. Uh, let's go back to that boot dash then, just to uh, continue this through. Um, and I'll put back. Um, I'll put the um, full view on, so it looks like so you can see what what's going on here. Um, yeah, so we're doing a boot dash over to here and we're trying to cut that corner as close as possible here. And uh, what do I mean by we're trying to cut this corner here as, as close as possible? Um, we we want to boot dash right against the corner of this um, these thorns here and hold left as like to push Link against the side of this and really brush against the corner of it as we da uh, boot dash down. Why do we want to do that? Um, here is a Ezlo trigger, which we want to avoid. There's an Ezlo trigger which makes, Ezlo mentions the Igors or something, but we really want to avoid this um, Ezlo trigger, and Link is really just brushing the corner of this. Like, um, it, it's if I, like, um, cut a, a little bit of the left input here and just did a bit down like so, we'd probably... Wow, I'm not even hitting it there. Okay, interesting. So probably really much yeah like it's right there um yeah so it's right right on the corner there yeah so it's 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 exactly like here like it extends really far down but it's exactly here so you want to avoid that that is low trigger there, but yeah. So then what we're doing here is we're coming down to the edge of this screen here. After you've avoided the Ezlo trigger, we're coming down to the bottom of the screen here. We want to transition down into the next area, which is um, the Wind Ruins. Now the collision, uh, um, the, um, the transition into the next area isn't um, doesn't extend across the entire bottom edge of the screen, but it's it starts at roughly here and is everywhere over to the left of that. Uh, so we're gonna like just demonstrate here. Um, yeah, here it is. It is. Uh, Like from this 
um, puddle here that's to the left of this um, um, this wind crest here that's where the transition point is the furthest to the right that we can be that we transition down into the wind ruins um, so what this kind of looks like optimally is when we're doing the boot dash down uh, ooh, I've gone too far here let's just let this play out I'm going to brush against the corner of that, dash diagonally down left like so. Uh, we're going to get to here, we're going to roll to the left there uh, and then transition down. I, was, I wasn't quite far enough to the left there, just do a little bit further to the left like so and you end up transitioning um, down like so. And we enter into the wind ruins. Okay, welcome back. Um, we have got a different ROM here. We've got, um, similarly to my previous um, tutorials, we've got our lovely um, locked camera view so that we can see where the hell Link is. So jet there with the camera panning over from where the entrance of Wind Ruins is over here, you can see where Link is located. He's actually located really far to the right off screen. Um, and this is kind of proportional to where he was previously. So, um, let's jump back here to, um, back to, um, um, Castle Wilds. So if you were to enter into bounds, like roughly here, um, very weird stuff's going on here but it's uh you're effectively entering into bounds yeah like here um proportional to where the entrance of the this area is look how far like link is away from the edge of the like this is the main entrance in links roughly here and Similarly, when we transition here, like he's that far away, that is roughly at that same position on on the screen. Uh, so, if we enter wind ruins as far to the right as possible, then we're going to be really far over to the right here, and we don't need to go all the way over there. And we're just cutting out some extra movement, which is a little bit nice. But the whole aim of what we're doing here is, um, and we screen transition down. Ooh. Sorry. We screen transition down, we hold right, and uh, Link gets a few seconds of um, being in a brand new area where he's frozen and unable to do anything. But during that, we're just holding right, and we're looking at the R button. And then as soon as the R button changes from... Uh, do nothing to having some text there. Again, we'll be on the Japanese version, so um, this won't be in English. Um, but it will, the R button will change to have the Japanese text for roll on there. Um, Link will be off screen, so we wouldn't see that Link has changed his facing direction to be facing to the right. But we can now start holding the boots to do a boot dash. So we start holding right into the, doing a boot dash. Now, you may notice there, uh, I did a little bit of an up input there. So as you're dashing along, Link can walk up a little bit before, uh, like, um, to to get to the top of um, the screen because Link's a little bit further down than the top of the screen. So when we start boot dashing to the right, just do a little bit of an up tap there just to push Link against the side of um, the, um, the top edge of the screen here. Uh, but... Really, throughout all of this, we're just not holding any directions at all. We're just doing a hard boot dash. And we're dashing all the way to the right hand, right hand end uh, edge of this out of bounds area to do a, another screen, um, to do a screen transition to the right. Uh, and we're going to hold boots throughout this entire thing. We get another really short screen transition there for a second screen transition. On this second screen transition, we're going to be mashing pause to get the camera to lock onto Link's position. Um, and hold up so that as soon as the camera locks onto Link's position, it will um, we will get um, transitioned into um, Fortress of Winds. 
Now, um, some of the times on that it is different in this version because the camera is in a different position. So the camera moving um, from the different position that is that we would normally expect it to be makes timing slightly different. But I hope that is a nice visualization of what is going on off screen um, here. So yeah, just so that we can see where Link is off screen. He's really far off to the right and he's hitting screen edges that are further off to the right of the screen um and yeah like he's uh we're gonna screen transition up into fortress of winds from uh this spot here you have to do those two um right screen transitions if we only did uh, go back to the spot like here we've done one screen transition here um we're not in the right room here to screen transition up into Fortress Winds. Uh, we need to go one more screen over before we can actually do that. Okay, right, let's jump back over to the um, Japanese version. Um... gonna let me in. okay there we go right so we've entered into wind ruins here we've entered in at that spot here we what we're gonna do whilst links off screen is gonna hold right as soon as we see the um, the text on the R key um, appear we're going to um, start holding the boots and then we're gonna count two screen transitions here this is the second screen transition we're gonna mash start during it and out of this uh, pause buffer to snap the camera over to links um, to to this. Well, okay, we're not really snapping the camera to links position here. We're snapping the camera um, to its fish finishing location so that it doesn't move really slowly. But yeah, out of that um, pause buffer, we hold up and we instantly transition into Fortress of Winds. And that is the end of the trick, and then we will just start doing this dungeon, which will be covered in a different video. But what I would like to do now is just go back to uh, the P-Hat and go over a bit more over the exact setup for this P-Hat and like what goes on with why does the walk strats work sometimes, why does the boot strat work other times, and why do very rarely sometimes none of them work at all so um i'm going to um pull up a um a nice visualization thing i've got here um which should be here here we go so here we've got a p hat um and um, I've got this isn't just in an image ed editor, so that it's really easy for me to move the p-hat around and demonstrate where the p-hat can land. Um, so also the the edge of where the p-hat is can be quite difficult some to see sometimes. Uh, it's like what is the border of the p-hat that we're looking for? So I've just put a purple border around it just so it's really clear where the p-hat is. Right, so what we are looking at is we're looking at his little feetsies here we're going to look at this bottom right um foot of the um the p hat and what we are looking at is we're going to look for it overlapping this bit of green grass here so this is the bridge here this is the wooden thing so this is yeah just just to orientate yourself here we are looking at this spot right here this this little green um a uh, bit of grass here, and the pH is gonna at random. There's gonna end up somewhere here. What I'm gonna show is going to be the most common one. I th I feel um, to um, to occur. Um, is it this? Sorry, I'm just. Again, the p-hat is rather difficult to tell where it needs to... Okay, here we go. This is... Okay, this is what we want to see. Right, so... This is the first pattern I'm going to show you. 
when you see the um when you when you push the p hat into the spot here it's going to look like um something like this it will it'll look like that what we're looking at here is we're looking at its foot there and we are looking for one light green patch above the foot and dark below it this is the first pattern and this correlates to when you do the setup this is the walking pattern it, if you get the p hat into the spot exactly like this you can always do the walking strat to get through i'll demonstrate it again um, in a bit i'll go through all of these patterns again i'm just showing you what it looks like but then uh, i'll go through um, what it will look like in the game and then demonstrate that it does work and that you can instantly clip through with the exact strategy now so th this is kind of like the one that i is going to be our central like um, position and the other positions that we're going to look at are going to be all um, different uh, directions away from this spot here so ideally you shouldn't ever get the p hat to be oh, whoops we should never get the p hat to be higher up here if you get something like this this is very weird the p hat is just not far enough down you should if you if you gust jar the p hat down it basically if the p hat is further up um than th this spot here it's not far enough down and you need to push it down more so ideally it gets to here but um one thing you should note is everything on this vertical column here is pretty good it's pretty damn solid and is going to be um uh, useful for us oh well no that is not what i wanted to do um sorry i'm just bringing up some notes here just to make sure i'm exactly correct with what i'm saying here yes okay excellent cool um so now um another spot that can happen is it's going to be over here like this the p hat obscures um like the all of the kind of like the the green little trail there and we just get a block of um just get a block of um green like so this is a bad pattern uh don't even bother trying to do the setup it just won't work um readjust the p hat into the corner properly basically the p hat isn't far enough to the left um is what is the problem here the p hat is not far enough to the left you need to push it over to the left um again for it to work um now another pattern if the p hat is one pixel further down what do we get here we get two light pixels above the foot of the p hat and one dark pixel below it um this relates to the boot dash strategy so if we do the setup as we did before and the p hats in, in the, the upper spot don't even need to bother trying to do the walk strat just do the boot strat and it will just work um also um another pattern that's very similar to this um with the p hat even one further tile to the south so that's the above the p hat is the, a, a dark tile but then the two light tiles are still there still visible this also is exactly the same it's the it's the it's the boot dash strat so these are quite nice to spot and how i like to remember it is that like two like from the foot of the p hat two pixels above it means you do a dash one means it's a walk because one is the first strategy two is the second strategy two is the second strategy these should be the most common patterns that you see if the p hat's further to the right then um like like so this is the the boot dash um the boot dash um position that we want if the p hat's further to one pixel to the right of this we get this weird thing where there's one pixel above um so you may see this you may see this and you'd be like oh there's one pixel above that's pattern one N there's one light pixel below 
so this is this is a bad pattern this is incorrect we don't want this to happen so reset up the p hat again push it around a bit and you should get it into a spot like this and be like okay this is two light pixels um this is a boot dash um yeah so um this is what happens if you push the p hat uh, so this is how I, I kind of like to set up the p-hat. I like to push it against this peg here and then push it down so that it will be um, in the right spot here um, so that we can get that. Um, get one of these patterns like so. What can happen sometimes as well is the p-hat can go one pixel further to the left like this. Um, And just double checking, I don't ha seem to have this in notes, but um, I believe that if the p hat is any of these in in any of these left further left positions here, so this is the f um, this is the one uh, this is uh, the one pattern. So we do a walk. This is the boot dash. So we do a boot dash, and then this is again the boot dash. So there are these three tiles that we uh, pixels that we normally end up on you can end further to the left so this is further to the left here now you see oh this is two li uh, light tiles above but the foot isn't below these double dark tiles here they're above the brown of the um um the um of the thing like so it, I do agree that these patterns can be very difficult to see in the fast paced timing that it takes to um, do this setup. So it's hard to spot this and you may just notice that there's more zigzags going on. Whatever you can use to um, to identify between these patterns the better. I'm just providing a suggestion here with how I like to see this. But uh, if you can figure out your own, go for that and let us know. That would be really interesting to have um, other ideas of how to visualize what's going on here quickly. So yeah, this is, this is going to be a luck-based setup. The walk strat will definitely not work like this. The boot dash has a chance to work, but it's re it's it's a it's an absolute 50-50. I do not recommend trying to go for the clip if you get the p hat into one of these spots. I would say just instantly just hit it again to try and reposition it to to one of the better patterns, one of the three good patterns that I showed before. Um. So yeah, this it, this is the can work sometimes unreliable and th this position here this here is so similar to this which is with two boot dashes but this this is the unreliable one and you may be able to tell with a bit more of the green visible here but it's it's rather difficult to tell exactly um Maybe it's because of like if you see all all of the dark uh, tiles here, uh, there's only like one of each of the dark tiles here, uh, whereas up here there's a double dark tile here, which is kind of tells you it's bad. Maybe maybe you can use that. Um, well, n not bad, but unreliable. And then here, this brown above the foot of the p hat. This is yeah just unreliable I'm, I'm not even sure if this works at all i'm gonna say that this is unreliable but it's it's un not ideal you don't want to go for any of these you want to go for the ones that i've done i've shown are good um and now if you keep hitting this p hat too much it, it can really get into some really weird spots i don't recommend any of those they just don't work very well at all uh, i just only recommends the three that I originally shown and ideally if you've just hit the the, the p hat roughly cut close once use the gust jar on it it's really likely just going to end up on any of these spots here um I will go over a, a some an another method of being able to really tell what's going on with um where the p hat positions exactly by telling 
like the p hat's going to move into a spot and then it will do like a one pixel adjustment off in a direction it will like kind of like shunt to the side or like up or down or whatever um it's harder to see with this because i've got much more finer control of everything here but um let's jump back into the game um and we can see um this in action okay right welcome back so Let's go into the game. We did a gust blast with the P hat here. And as you, uh, uh, as we can see here, the P hat were, that I shield knocked to the left like so. Look at this. This is one dot uh, above the foot. This is the one pattern. This is the um, this is the do a walk will work, but we haven't used a gust jar on it recently. So the time the the um, the stun timer on the P hat's rather low. We want to give ourselves the maximum amount of time here. So we're gonna put. I'm gonna go stand above the P hat. We're gonna use the boot um, the gust. I didn't really look at this. I can kind of tell now whilst I'm doing the gust that okay, this is a good pattern here. But we use the gust once on it. And it's knocked the p-hat down and as we know as what we just went over everything below the um the do the walk strats to um to work uh it is good um if we push it further down all of those pixels below will will work great so yeah we've got we can see above the p-hat foot there's two tiles visible uh, uh, two two light green tiles so that's telling us okay the boot strategy will work so okay now let's go for the trick so yeah let's go for this we're gonna go like that we're gonna come up here we're gonna do the boot dash and we're through and it works every single time nice and consistent if you can v see the uh those three um patterns that i dem uh, that i've i've shown if you can v visually spot them nice and quickly uh, they can be rather tricky. Uh, I just recommend practicing it. It's, it just practice this a lot. Um, keep pushing the p-hat into the spot and see if you can visually just spot very rapidly. Okay, that's the the one walk. Okay, that's a bad one. Okay, that's a uh, that's the boot dash strat. Um, yeah, just practice that. You will be able to consistently every single first try get this p-hat um, clip, um, and then. And then uh, also build up the muscle memory of immediately doing a roll to the right, roll down here, come down to the spot here. Just doing all of the movement and then just like finishing off the movement here. Uh, you want it, you want it to feel nice and natural. That as soon as you've done the clip, you don't even need to think about it. You just immediately start heading over to fortress without thinking about it. Just practice the stuff right before the clip, the clip, and then right after the clip. Just in a nice sequence. Once you get the um, the core components of each of everything set up, right. So I think that is everything um, we need to know about the p hat clip. Um, hurrah, um, p hat clip solved mystery resolved it's a consistent strat now no one should have any issues with it anymore hope everyone enjoys this uh, tutorial please let me know if i've forgotten to mention anything going on here and lastly don't go to the left it sucks right that's it from me <laughs> um i'll be seeing you around thanks for watching